If you're an electronics or ham radio enthusiast, you've no doubt heard of the Tiny SA Ultra and maybe have even considered picking one up for your workbench. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a Tiny SA Ultra made by Zenco and sent to me by our sink for review. Here's a look at everything that comes with the Tiny SA. We of course get the Tiny SA Ultra itself. We get a telescoping antenna, two jumper cables with SMA male ends on them. We get a guitar pick wrist strap to be used for kind of activating the screen. But we also get a stylus that you can use for the screen and this is actually what I prefer. We get an SMA female to female coupler and we get a USB-C charging cable. Before we start the overview of the Tiny SA Ultra, I just want to apologize for any screen glare that you may see. I've got it kind of minimized as best I can, but it still may creep in from time to time. So the screen for the Tiny SA Ultra measures about three and a half inches wide by about 2.3 inches tall. Over here on the left side, we've got two SMA female jacks. One is the calibration port and the other one is the RF in and out port. Now it's a good idea to keep these dust caps installed on the jacks when you're not using the Tiny SA. That'll of course help keep dust and debris out of the ports, but it'll also help prevent any static discharge from ruining the sensitive electronics inside this device. Up on top of the Tiny SA, we'll find the on and off switch here and we'll find the navigation rocker control here. This also has a press function to allow you to select certain items when navigating through the menu. And then over here on the right, is a little anchor point for the wrist strap. Down on the bottom of the Tiny SA, we have a USB-C charging port. You can also use this to interface with a computer so you can run the software and have a larger screen to look at. Over here, we have a slot for a micro SD card. And as you can see, this unit shipped with an SD card installed. And then over here is a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. You can actually use this to listen to the signals that the Tiny SA is receiving. This Tiny SA is a ZS406 model, and that means by default it starts off in spectrum analyzer mode measuring between 0 and 900 megahertz. Now this Tiny SA Ultra is capable of measuring up to 5.4 gigahertz in ultra mode, and we'll look at that later in the video. Now up to this point in the video, we just jumped in and used the Tiny SA, and it seemed to be working just fine. But before first use, it's really a good idea to do a self-test and a calibration. So I'm going to bring in one of the patch cables and connect it up between the two RF ports on the side of the Tiny SA. Now I'm going to go into the top level menu and select config. And then from the config menu, I'm going to select self-test first. And you'll see that the Tiny SA will proceed through a series of self-tests and give us a status of the test over here on the left. Now that the test is complete, you can see mine passed all of its tests and we're ready to move on to the calibration step. I'm going to again access the top level menu, go to config, and then choose level cal. Now from this menu, we have two choices, one for calibration up to 5.4 gigahertz and calibration above 5.4. Now calibration above 5.4 requires some extra steps that I'm not gonna cover in this video. So I'll leave links in the video description in case you wanna see calibration above 5.4. But for now, I'm gonna choose the first option and then I'm gonna click calibrate and you'll see the Tiny SA will now go through a series of calibration tests and again, give us status messages when it's complete. And just like before, once calibration is done, we can go back into normal operation mode. Along the bottom here, you can see that we're measuring basically the noise floor of the spectrum in my workshop, and that's hovering somewhere around negative 90 dB or so. You can also see that along with sort of the background noise, the Tiny SA is detecting signal spikes and pointing them out with that marker number one that moves to each of those signal spikes. For each measurement cycle, the Tiny SA is showing us the frequency and signal strength of the strongest spike being detected down here with marker number one. Along the left edge of the screen, we can see various information about the current status of the Tiny SA. And then over on the right, this is our measurement scale 
with 0 dB being the top and negative 90 being the bottom. So now let's look at a couple of real signals so you can see how the tiny SA works. Now one thing to keep in mind about these devices is that they can be damaged by very strong signals. And you can see right here, the maximum allowed signal is positive 6 dBm. So with that in mind, I'm gonna use my Subaru key fob, which should generate a signal that is strong enough for us to look at, but not so strong that it'll damage the tiny SA. When I activate the key fob, you can see the signal spike here, and it's being measured at 434 megahertz with a strength of minus 46 dBm. Now just for comparison, I've got a second key fob from a Toyota, and if I activate this one, you can see we're getting a signal spike at 312.6 megahertz with a strength of minus 68 .8. DBM. To get a better look at a signal of interest, we can narrow up the spectrum. In order to do that, I'm going to go into the main level of the menu, and then I'm going to choose frequency. You can see here I can choose a start frequency, a stop frequency, a center frequency, and a span frequency. So for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to set my start frequency to 433 megahertz, and I'm gonna change my stop frequency to 435 megahertz. Now you can see the new start and stop frequency are here, and the Tiny SA automatically calculates the center frequency at 434 megahertz, and the span at two megahertz. Now we can also change our ranges by simply entering a span and a center frequency, and the start and stop frequencies will be calculated automatically by the Tiny SA. Now that we've got that narrowed up, I'm gonna activate the Subaru key fob again, and you can see now we're getting a much better look at the signal generated by the key fob. You can see up here our frequency measurement is more accurate. Now you may be noticing a couple of different spikes in the signal and it's kind of changing a little bit. And I think that's because of the spread spectrum technology used in the key fob. Now if you remember the Toyota key fob was transmitting closer to 300 megahertz. So if I now activate this one, we're not gonna see any signal spikes because we're not looking at that slice of the spectrum. If we wanna capture a snapshot of a signal on the screen so that we can examine it in closer detail, the way to do that is to go into the top level of the menu and click pause. Now I can use the rocker switch on top of the Tiny SA to move the marker around and examine various peaks and troughs and look at the frequency and level measurements on top. You can also save screenshots from the Tiny SA to the SD card. In order to do that, we access the main level of the menu and go to storage and then choose the save capture item and we give it a file name. And you can see test.bmp was written to the SD card. Later, I can take the SD card out and pop it into another device like a computer that can read that BMP file and I can examine it further. To resume operation, I just access the main menu again and uncheck pause. We may run into situations where there are multiple signals showing up on the screen and we wanna see measurement information for many of them at one time. In order to do that, we can go into the Tiny SA main menu and choose marker. And then we can choose from these presets down here to add or remove markers. So for example, if I choose four markers, we can now see we're getting four measurements at the four highest signal spikes. And the measurement levels are all shown up here for marker one, two, three, and four. Another feature of the Tiny SA that you might want to enable is the waterfall display. Now by default that's off, but you can turn it on by going to the main menu level and choosing display, and then turning on the waterfall. Now you can see that as the measurement cycles progress over time, we can see any measured signals appear in the waterfall display. If we want to look at signals greater than 900 megahertz, we need to go in and enable ultra mode. To do that, I'm going to go to the top level menu and choose config, and then choose more. And then from here, I can just click enable ultra. Before entering ultra mode, this warning dialog pops up to let us know that we need the password in order to enable it. I've gone to the Tiny SA website and I've gotten that password, so I will enter it now. Now you can see we're in ultra mode and we're scanning between zero and three gigahertz. You're probably also noticing that the scan speed is much slower than it was in normal mode. And that's because we're looking at a much wider frequency span than we were in default mode. So if we go in and change the frequency, we can increase that scan speed a little bit. Instead of starting at zero, I'll set this so it starts at 
2 gigahertz. And you can see now it's scanning much faster. As I mentioned before, the top frequency in ultra mode is somewhere around 5.4 gigahertz. So I'm gonna enter a stop frequency of six gigahertz. And you can see now we're scanning between two and six. And the scan speed again is much slower because that's a pretty wide swath of spectrum to look at. This signal spike you're seeing here at around 2.4 gigahertz is the Wi-Fi router on the other side of the room. And this signal spike is the Wi-Fi router on the other side of the house that runs at a higher frequency. To disable ultra mode, we just go back into the menu, choose config, choose more, and uncheck ultra. And then the tiny SA goes back in and the top limit is now 900 megahertz like it was before. Now that we've seen the basics of the tiny SA, I wanna go through and do a harmonic measurement test of this Baofeng HT. I'm not gonna go into detail about the test setup in this video. I'll leave a link to some videos down below that go through that in more detail if you wanna learn more. But I will show you that I'm gonna use 40 decibels of attenuation between the radio and the tiny SA to cut the signal level down so that I don't overload the tiny SA. I've got the Baofeng radio connected up directly to my attenuators, and then I've got one of the patch cables connected to the RF input jack on the tiny SA. Before I start off the harmonic test, I need to tell the tiny SA that I have a 40 decibel attenuator in line. In order to do that, I'm gonna access the main menu and I'm gonna check the level option. And I'm gonna go down here to external gain. You can see by default that is set to zero dB. I'm gonna choose that and then I'm gonna type in minus 40 times one. And now if we check that level again, you can see that it now says negative 40 dB. And you may have also seen as we were kind of looking at the menu, the measurement scale over here on the right has changed and now plus 40 dB is our top level and minus 50 dB is our low level. So now we're ready to set up the harmonic test. I'm gonna go into the main menu and I am going to choose measure. And then from there, I'm gonna choose the harmonic option. We're first prompted to enter a center or fundamental frequency that we wanna test. So in our case, it's gonna be 146.520 megahertz. Now the next prompt is for a span frequency. Now if we enter zero, that'll just show us the whole spectrum without any dividing lines. But if we put in a frequency, we can see dividing lines on the screen that will help more easily identify the harmonics. And normally we want those dividing lines to be spaced the same distance as the fundamental frequency. So I'm gonna enter in 146.520 megahertz. So now you can see the test is set and ready to go. We've got our blue lines indicating our harmonic spans and the spectrum is down here waiting for a signal. So if I key up the radio, it's gonna take about 30 seconds or so for the tiny SA to kind of settle out and for our measurement to become accurate. Now that the measurement has settled out, you can see we've got four spikes. The first one is our fundamental frequency and that's measuring a level of 35 or so dBm. Now the second harmonic is coming in 146.52 megahertz above the primary frequency and our signal level is minus 51 or so dBc. Now the C in the measurement indicates that the signal level is relative to the center or fundamental frequency. Now spike number three is coming in at minus 47 dBc and number four, which you've kind of seen kind of coming and going, is down at minus 54 dBc or so. For the sake of comparison, I've brought in a second radio, this time a Kenwood, and I'm expecting this one to show up a little bit cleaner in the spectrum analyzer. So I'll key up this radio and I'll wait for the measurements to settle out. And now that things have settled, you can see our primary frequency is measuring about 36 dBm, like we saw on the Baofeng. And as expected, we're not seeing any harmonic spikes at all from the Kenwood. There's a ton more that we can do with the Tiny SA in spectrum analyzer mode, but I wanna spend some time showing you the signal generator function in this device. So I'm gonna go let the dog in and uh, we'll get to it. To get into the signal generator, I once again go to the top level menu and I choose mode. 
Here you can see we have selections for signal generator and calibration output, so we're obviously going to choose signal generator. Now we've got this page of options that we can set for the signal generator. Now this first option turns the actual signal generation on and off. The next field sets the frequency. You can see right now it's set to 10 megahertz. Now I can click and drag this slider to change the frequency, or I can click in the center where it says set, and I can enter in a specific frequency. I can also increment or decrement the frequency by clicking on these sections in the field. So for example, if I click plus 10K, you can see it goes up to 7.42 megahertz. And if I click the minus K, it goes back down. We can change the signal level the same way we did with the frequency by clicking the slider and dragging it around. And just like with the frequency, we can enter a direct value by clicking in the center and entering in that value. And we can also increment and decrement using these sections in the field. This field allows us to set modulation type. We can choose between AM or FM modulation, and we can set a frequency of the tone that we want to modulate. We can set the AM modulation depth or the FM deviation, and we can also switch the level to decibels per microvolt. The signal generator also offers a sweep function, and we can set the options for that in this field. You can see we can set the sweep span, the level, the sweep time, and sweep points. And then this field turns the sweep on and off. This field allows us to set an external gain value similar to the way we did in spectrum analyzer mode when we had the attenuators set up. You can just go in here and type in a value. And then the last option here lets us configure the wave type. We can choose between a cleaner signal but max out at a 4.4 gigahertz frequency or choose highest accuracy and max out at 5.4 gigahertz. Just to give you a quick demo of the signal generator, I've brought in my dad's old Realistic DX440 shortwave receiver. So if I turn that on and tune it to 7.41 megahertz, I can then enable the signal generator on the Tiny SA and you can hear the signal and maybe you can even see that we're getting a full scale signal on the signal meter. And then over on the Tiny SA, if I lower the output level, you can hear that the signal is now much weaker, and in fact we're getting two bars on the signal meter. The Tiny SA is a handy gadget to have on your workbench if you're interested in electronics or ham radio. If you want to learn more, I will have an affiliate link in the video description below. 7-3 for now, and thanks for watching.